The ratio table method lets me multiply two numbers together by breaking the problem apart into smaller multiplication problems. This is also called the partial product strategy, and it lets me take those smaller problems and build up to my original problem. Let's use 35 times 22 to demonstrate. One way I can set up my ratio table is in columns from left to right. If my goal is to find out what 35 times 22 is, I am going to start with 1 times 22. This top row eventually needs to get to 35, and when it does, the bottom row will tell me what my answer is. Now, I could continue to add groups of 22 together until I reach 35, but that would take too much time, especially if working with larger numbers. What is nice about the ratio table is that it encourages me to notice relationships between the numbers. Before we continue, we must remember that the top row and bottom row represent a relationship as well. If I multiply or divide the top row by a certain number, I need to do the same to the bottom row in order to keep that relationship the same. This rule can be tricky if I am adding or subtracting to the top and bottom rows. Adding or subtracting a certain number of groups to the top row means I have to add or subtract the value that number of groups has to the bottom row because the top row represents the number of groups and the bottom row represents the value that that number of groups holds. Let's go up to 10 groups of 22 to get 220. To get to 30, I could either multiply my 10 groups of 22 by 3, or add another 10 groups of 22 to make 20 groups, and then add another 10 groups of 22 to make 30 groups. Now all that's left is to get my last 5 groups of 22, and this is where I am going to look for any relationships between the numbers. There is a relationship between 5 and 10, because 5 is half of 10. If I divide my 10 groups of 22 in half, I get 5 groups equaling 110. If I add my 30 groups and 5 groups together, I will get my answer to the original problem 35 times 22.